Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to use Plotly, which I've got open in front of me here at plotly.com forward slash python to start plotting some of our candles onto a nice looking graph. To use Plotly we'll need to install it in our virtual environment. So you can see in the console here that I'm in the root of our code folder and I have my virtual environment active. You should always have that active. To install Plotly you'll need to type pip install and then Plotly. Remember if you just want to install it at the user level to use the dash dash user flag, we talked about that early on in this series. Otherwise just hit enter and Plotly should be installed. Once installed we can type pip freeze, hit enter and that just gives us a list with the version numbers of all the packages that have been installed. Some we've done, some have been done as dependencies, but just make sure somewhere in the list you find Plotly. With that done, back in the notebook following on from the previous video, we can import Plotly by typing plotly.graphobjects as go. Now the reason we're doing the as go, so making an alias here, is simply because that's done in all of the Plotly documentation, so we might as well follow along with the standards from the Plotly documentation. So I'm going to re-execute the cells here just to make sure everything's okay. I'm going to delete this describe cell here. And now we can write some code to plot our candles using Plotly. The first thing we want to do is make a data frame for plotting our candles. I don't want to plot all 4,000 candles straight away, so we'll just plot the last 100 candles of the data frame. Now there are lots of ways to do this. The way I'm going to use is to type df underscore plot is equal to df dot i lock open square brackets minus 100 and a colon. Now if I on this I do def plot dot shape, you'll see that we have 100 rows. So what's this line doing here? Well, I'm making a new variable called dfplot, and I'm taking a subset of the existing data frame using iloc and saying I want to go from minus 100 candles from the end to the end. Now you can read online all about selections in lists with Python, so I won't go into it with detail here, but you use a from and a to with a colon in the middle, and you can actually have a second colon with a step as well afterwards. But essentially this is just saying here, take the last 100. If I wanted to take the first 100, I would do this. If I wanted to take the 50th, up to, but not including the hundredth, I would do this, and so on. Now one thing to really note about this that can be tricky in pandas is in our case here, this is going to take this subset and make a copy of it and store that copy in this variable. And that's because we have different types of data in our data frame. If our data frame had columns of all the same type, it wouldn't actually give us a copy it would just give us a reference to those particular rows in the data frame. And you have to be really, really careful with this when you come to modifying your data later on. And in fact, in general, what I tend to always do is where I'm in doubt is actually force making a copy of the data so that I know I'm dealing with a copy of the data and I don't start modifying my original data. So again, we have 100 rows of our data and now we can use Plotly to plot our candlestick. So the first thing we do is type fig is equal to go.figure. And now we have a figure, which is essentially our plot. We can do what's called an add a trace. Each time you want to add bars or lines or candles or whatever to a figure in Plotly, you use something called add trace. So we're going to type fig dot add underscore trace, open brackets, go dot candlestick, open brackets. And I'm going to press enter and go onto a new line here so it's all a little bit clearer. And now we need to supply the x data, which is the time, the open, the high, the low, and the close data. And now that we've actually set up the plot to go, the only thing we need to do is show it by typing fig.show. And as I do that, I realize I've made a small typo here. That should be candlestick with a small s. And there we have a candlestick plot using Plotly. We've written very, very little code to do it, which is really good news because graphing can usually be a bit of a pain. And Plotly actually comes with a lot of interactivity with charts. You can zoom in, you can look at the range and generally play about with the data. There's a toolbar here to do all sorts of things. And I find the library really, really good. One thing I will say though, is this chart looks a little bit rubbish at the moment like this in the notebook. So the next video, we're gonna have a bit of fun and actually style this and make it look quite a bit better. So hopefully that all made some sense. Thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video.